Welcome to the Bahamas Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Week. I'm partial, but I would say it's the best part of Capital One Bowl Week. Normally at this time, I tell you about the weather. It's perfect. It's the Bahamas. <laughs> it's UAB. It's Ohio. A pair of eight and four squads from Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. Here. I thought Poppy was the one playing defense on that last pass play. Make sure there wasn't an interception by Williams on second down and ten. Here's Rourke, the quarterback. He can run, and he can cross midfield as well. He's got first down yardage. Roderick Thomas brought him down, but not until he gained 13. And that's what this offense brings with the uh, OC, Tim Albin. They're going to make you defend all the whole field, east, west, north, and south, sideline to sideline, because Nathan Rourke is a guy who he's not going to just keep it, the ball into the belly of the running back. He's going to pull it and gain positive yards just like he did on that play right there, Steve. So terrific opening drive here now for Ohio. First down and 10, they're across midfield and into Blazers territory. Out of the shotgun now is Rourke. Little shovel pass, off for a Louette. And they're gonna throw it, it's Andrew Meyer throwing. Throws it back to the quarterback, Nathan Rourke. They have shown that play before for a touchdown. And there it's at least effective enough to move the chains to the first down. Yes, they have. They have a little razzle-dazzle in their, in their playbook, and they're going to bring it out in this Bahamas Bowl. I tell you what, Marshawn Diggs, number two, the defensive back for UAB, he got lost on the play. Two receivers top of the screen. Watch looking that way, and it's a quarterback draw. He'll keep it, take off, and stays on his feet. Nathan Rourke has plenty of first down yardage there. Another big game for the quarterback. He rips off 18. And when Nathan Rourke is most dangerous is when he's going north and south. I mean, this young man is six foot four, 220 pounds. This is the 11th play of the drive. The ball to two. Let's see if they give it to Olet. Rourke is under center. Fakes. And we'll throw it away. Wide open, D.L. Knock. The play fake freezes everyone, and it's D.L. Knock. That was just a great play call. Excellent execution. I mean, D.L. Knock came from the right side all the way across behind the line to the left side. He got lost in the traffic. Not a blazer in sight. They didn't even see D.L. Knock coming. D.L. Knock, how about that? That's his first touchdown of the season. You don't, you don't, you don't use his name often. You don't call his name often in these games. So but pretty... for, for a football guy, D.L. Knock. D.L. Knock is a really that's a good, good name. football name. I agree. Looks back good on the back of the jersey. Louis Zervos is perfect on the extra point. D.L. Knock. Good time for his first touchdown of the season. And here in Nassau, Ohio, on the board. Impressive first drive. Be his job to signal raising his hand in the air yes. when there are 10 seconds left in the play clock. He will extend his arm out to the right when there are five seconds okay. and drop his hand at zero. And we've been told they will be rather lenient with trying to get a timeout if the play clock should expire, since they're just keeping it on the field and no one can really see it. Here's Spencer Brown on third down and two. He's got first down yardage, and we have Laura Rutgers. Those guys, they play very well together. Here's third down and seven. See what kind of defensive play they come up with. They set up the screen to James Noble. He'll get across midfield, but he's nowhere near that first down marker. Brad Ellis came up from his cornerback spot to make the tackle. 205. You don't, you don't often see those measurables. <laughs> that height with that weight, they don't often go together. Exactly. Just a real physical, strong runner. He's the workhorse of this offense. They fake it to him this time. Rourke's got plenty of time to throw. Zips one down the middle of the field. Wide open is Poppy White. Easiest touchdown he'll ever score. It's 56 yards. A scoring strike from Nathan Rourke to Poppy White. And the Bobcats are in business. And that's what the Bobcats offense, that's what they bring to the table. They're going to run, run, run. Then they're going to hit you with a play action because they're going to force you into a man-to-man -man situation. And once you have to go man-to-man, -man, they love those eyes, especially when they got number four, Poppy White, lined up wide. On for the extra point is Zervos. And that extra point is on the way. And it is no good. Louis Zervos misses the extra point. He missed one the entire regular season, and he misses that one there. You got to play against the run. 
Yes, sir. And when you protect against the run, <laughs> that leaves the pass open. And they strike fast, too. Erdley comes in with a streak of having thrown a touchdown in seven consecutive games. Second down and ten, he's going to throw again. Zips one across the middle, aiming to complete Andre Wilson, some fancy footwork. He's got the first down, and maybe that's just the Blazers' need. Yeah, they need, they need any positive play they can get right now, but I'm really surprised that the offensive coordinator, Les Koning, has come out throwing the ball so, so often on first and second down, because this is a team that's a very run-heavy, oriented offense, but I guess it's something about the Bobcats defense that they think they can uh, take advantage of. Gain of 14 on that last play. Ball out at the 31. Here's Erdley to throw and complete again. It's Andre Wilson making people miss. He's got first down yardage and 11 yards on the play. Erdley, a little rhythm now for this yeah, Blazers offense. Exactly. That's, unless Kenning, not Coney, Kenning has uh, found something in that defense that he thinks he can take advantage of. UAB's offense coming out here just throwing the ball all over the field. What a surprise. He's going to throw again. They're not even play faking. Early down the middle to Spencer Brown. What makes some people miss? And Brown stays on his feet. The true freshman from Kimberly, Alabama, with a big play. And they're well across midfield. They said, hey, coach, uh, yeah, we want, <laughs> we want to keep him on offense. <laughs> yeah, you're not getting him back on defense. You want to talk about a business decision? Yes, sir. Here's third down and eight. Early flush from the pocket. Trying to turn the corner. And he'll just sail it out of bounds. He'll throw it away. He'll take the big loss. Brings up a fourth down. Going to be a 37-yard field goal attempt for Nick Vogel. Out of the hold of Jacob Clark, who is the coach's kid. All the way, and it's blocked. The field goal is blocked. Blocked by Will Evans in the middle of that Ohio defensive line. Nick Vogel, who has never had a kick blocked in college, has that kick blocked right there, keeping it 13 nothing. And the drive that started off with so much promise for the Blazers, too, it ends with a blocked field goal attempt. Looked like Kent Berger, Will Evans, one of those two big men in the middle. Frank Solich, cool and calm. Guy's been coaching 50 years. He's yes, not going to get too excited about anything. No. I mean, I'm and that was deflating for them. I mean, you watch the demeanor on their sideline. Everyone just dropped their heads. Their shoulders went down. Hey, guys, there's a lot of football left to be played. Maybe the final play of the first quarter. We'll see. There's Dorian Brown and Anthony Rush. And Shaq Jones make the tackle in a big way. And that should be the end of quarter number one as the sun comes out. Exactly. Like he's trying to do the best for these kids possible. Because he turns into a, a high school coach at that point. Early was hit as he released. Hits Colin Lisa. Lisa's one of those 15 guys who hung around and is being rewarded. But man, Early took a shot. Stay in the game. Yeah, they got to they keep their defense on the sideline. Get those guys some rest. Play fake to Donnie Lee and a quick throw on the slant inside. And it's knocked away. Broke it up. Looking to hook up with Justin Walker, and he could not bring it in. Fourth down. Exactly. It's a good looking lid right there. This man's having a happy holiday season <laughs> so far. Yes, <laughs> he is. Out of the 25. Nathan Rourke will hand it off to Dorian Brown. Down the sideline. Dorian Brown. Forget about it. You want to talk about explosive speed. It's 74 yards to what I like to call the house. Touchdown, Ohio. Steve, this office has an incredible one-two punch with Dorian Brown and A.J. Olette. You got Olette, who just softens up a defense, and you bring Brown into the game, one move, and he's off to the races. He has that home run hitter type speed. That's what makes this offense so versatile and dangerous. Extra point on the way. There is a flag down. We'll check the marker. Illegal substitution. 12 men on defense. Mm. Half the distance to the goal. We will try it. Until this point. And he'll split the uprights right there. 
clean living. So Ohio has 207 total yards of offense and three touchdowns. But it's been the explosive big plays yeah. we didn't necessarily think we would see. Today. Taking on the NFC East leading Philadelphia Eagles. Monday Night Countdown kicks off our coverage at 6 p.m. Eastern from the link in Philadelphia. And you know the atmosphere will be off the charge there. Spencer Brown on the receiving end. There is a penalty flag. Might have been a late hit out of bounds. We'll check the market. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds. Defense number two. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. This brings his running back, Spencer Brown. Hey, the Blazers will take it any way they can get it. Here's Erdley going to throw it down the middle of the field. It's caught. Caught at the 15. It's Ronnie Turner who spins down to the 10. By far the biggest play of the game for the Blazers and maybe just the spark they need. That's good for 37. Yeah, you're exactly right. That's the spark that they needed. Nice brown, nice run by Spencer Brown. They, right after the penalty, take a shot. Why not? Go downfield. It's third down and 11. They can get a first down. Here's Erdley. Throwing to his right now, looking left, middle of the end zone, and it's knocked away. Excellent coverage, Javon Hagan on Ronnie Turner to knock it away. Yeah, they, they have to come away with some points off of this drive. So this can get out of hand quick. Vogel had it blocked from 47. They push him back five. This will be from 34 now. Field goal on the way. And he blasts it through, and I mean blasts it through. And you hear the roar from the crowd. <laughs> the Blazers are on the scoreboard. They're in the game. It's the little things in life, like three <laughs> points. Walk to throw. Able to complete. Andrew Meyer on the receiving end. Will Dawkins had the coverage, and Rourke had enough time to go to a second or third option. There. No, you're right. He did. He went through his progression, and this is a really strong catch by Andrew Meyer, too, to reach up there and snag it with his hands. With second and 10 for the 39, off the play fake. York to throw, and able to complete to Poppy White. Down the sideline, making some people miss, and he is knocked out at the 23-yard line. Poppy White, we said he's an impact player at 5'9", 168 pounds. He's the type of guy who can make you miss in the phone booth. Look at these moves right here on the sideline. I mean, he's, he's, he's exciting to watch when he has the ball in his hands. 14-yard gain on that play. UAB has taken a timeout. Well, obviously, I'm uh, doing my job, too. All right. Working through it for some college football. Nassau, the Bahamas. Oh, let the receiver out of the backfield. He's down at the 11-yard line. It's a gain of 14. Minute 23 to go here in the half. Here's first and goal for Ohio, looking to add on to their 20-3 lead. Rourke gives it through to Dorian Brown, dragging some people across the goal line, and he's in for the touchdown. Dorian Brown for the nine-yard score. With A.J. Olet in the locker room getting his shoulder attended to, the Bobcats score again. And this is why they're one of the, the highest scoring offenses in the country, because once they get the red zone, Steve, they don't walk away with field goals. They walk away with touchdowns. It all starts up front. We're talking about a veteran offensive line, 106 starts combined with those five guys. And then Dorian Brown, his second touchdown, of the afternoon, man, you see while how, while they're so effective in the red zone, why they score so many points per game. I'm a 40 points. On his way, the extra point. Had missed one earlier. That's a nine play, 63 yard drive. Take six more minutes off the clock. Right. And they want to get away from their tendencies. Exactly. They got away from their own game. They're trailing 27 to 3. They really did. This is going to be an important drive for them right here coming out of halftime. See if they can get back to who they are offensively. Throwing on the run and completing to Colin Lisa. Good job to come back to the football. They get out to the 30. There is a penalty marker down. There was a penalty on the return, and that negated the good return and forced them back. Personal foul. Rough in the passer. 
Defense number 38. 15-yard penalty at the end of the run. First down. That's Chad Moore being a little over-aggressive. Took an extra shot at A.J. Erdley. They get 21 on the play, Dez, and tack on 15 on the penalty. And that was a no-brainer. I mean, the ball is left Early's hand probably at least a second and a half or two seconds before that hit. Third down and four. Again, this is more manageable anyway. Brown, eight carries for 31 yards to this point. Play fake. Early to throw and complete. It's Ronnie Turner. He's got first down yardage. And Turner has dropped the 30-yard line, and that gets some enthusiasm going on that UAB sideline after the gain of 18. Hey, game is it's two halves, and I know that Bill Clark and his staff went in halftime and told these guys, listen, hey, we have another half to go out there and show the college football world what we're about, what our program is about. Second down and nine. At the 30 of Ohio. Erdley's going to take off and slide down to the 20. And has first down yard. Or let's see. We'll see where they mark the slide. I think he's going to be a little short. Pretty close, yep. Yeah. He slid feet first. And um, <laughs> he wants the mark to be where his feet were, not where the ball was. Yep. It's pretty close. They're going to call it short. Third down and one. And Andre Wilson in motion, top of your screen. And he's going to throw, try to throw to Wilson. Able to complete inside the 10. And Des, I think that ball might have been deflected. And Wilson able to stay with it and make the clutch catch for first down. They dodged the bullet right there because that ball was deflected. It actually should have been picked off by number 21, Jalen Fox, who has two interceptions on the season. And it's third and goal. Might be pulled down territory. Interesting. No, you're right about that. That's an uh, uh, interesting decision they have to make. I'm thinking if I'm Coach Clark, I got, I got to take the points, though. Because if they, uh, this, they, don't, they don't get a touchdown here, it will be so deflated. In big trouble. He'll loft it back of the end zone. And it's out of bounds. Out of the back of the end zone. It was actually caught by Ronnie Turner who goes 6-4, but not even close to the back line. So it is fourth and goal for the nine. Yeah, you got to take the points. That's where the high point the ball just didn't have enough real estate. Bill Clark, the head coach, with a decision, he's made his decision. He'll go conservative, and he'll take the field goal attack. Here's Nick Vogel. This is from 25 yards away. He hit from 34 earlier and had one blocked from 47. And that field goal is on the way, and it is good. Well, remember this point in the game. Yes. 10.46 to go in the third. Blazers had a field goal. Trail by 21. Oh, that one of the real leaders, one of the great stories, a guy who walked on to earn his scholarship. And now it's Brown. Second and seven. York to throw. Deep down the sideline, it is caught. It's Poppy White. The UAB sideline says he was out of bounds. But White is smiling. And the official saying it's a catch good for 26. A little hand fighting going on right there. But before the game, we talked about White, his athleticism. He's and said, we're not falling for the banana in the tailpipe. <laughs> the old banana in the tailpipe. <laughs> On third and ten now. Here come the Creepers. Yeah, UAB. Crazy. Yeah, like they're going to try to bring a little pressure. Here it comes up the middle. It's picked up nicely. Ward throws, and it's knocked away. Batted down on defense by Chris Woolbright, the junior from Brooklyn, New York. So that's almost like someone coming to your house saying, okay, guess what? We're going to have to break up your family. That's why you saw such raw emotion in that footage right there. A.J. Erdley taking back-to-back -back big hits, first by Quentin Poling and then by Trent Smart. Joel Dixon is standing at his goal line. Gets it in the air. And Poppy White from the 41. Rather big part is Kylan Nelson. Nelson. Inside the 30, all the way down inside the 25-yard line. Kylan Nelson, what a return by him. 
His first career kickoff return was back in 2014 when they last had the program. So to have some decisions to make. But you get a chance to watch Josh Allen and Wyoming coming up, and that will be a treat. On first down and 10, here's Dorian Brown. Off the big punt return. It's the big touchdown run. That sets up the latest score for the Bobcats. That's what happens in a game like this, Steve, when you, you give up a huge play to special teams. Then you have a, a, a big run, another one by Dorian Brown. You know, now you look at UAB's sideline, they, they're looking for answers right now. They don't know what's happened to them. Defensively, they can't stop the running game of the Bobcats. And offensively, they can't get anything going. Extra point is on the way, and it is good. Dorian Brown has become a story. Seven catches, seven, uh, seven rushes for 106 yards and three touchdowns. Amazing that A.J. Olette can leave the game, yeah. and you barely notice it. You barely feel it. That's the depth of the Bobcats of Ohio, 34-6. It's a great story. On third down and 10 now. Birdley has gone cold throwing the ball. Heats up a little bit to Andre Wilson. You can say he was out of bounds. You're gonna call it incomplete. Wow. So Erdley now has missed officially on his last eight passing attempts. But you're right, up with this big lead. I think they've been running the football a little bit since they've been so good at running the football. Yeah, I mean, they got this guy, Dorian Brown, back there who's averaging like 15 yards every time he carries the rock. Might wanna put the ball in his hands. Here's Rourke throwing. On um, the slant to Meyer again, he has his first down yardage. About Ohio Bobcats, and that makes, it makes sense now why they're not just gonna sit on the lead, just run the ball. They're still remaining aggressive offensively. Little trickeration, little flea flicker now. And the throw able to complete to Troy Mangin, the tight end. And he is knocked out of bounds at the 13 yard line. So not only are they not running, yeah. they're not passing. Now they're going trickeration and flea flicker. As I just got through talking about this team remaining aggressive, they go flea flicker <laughs> when they really don't have to. No doubt. They want this to be the last impression that you have of the Ohio Bobcats football program. Up the middle. It's Dorian Brown on his feet. Another touchdown. That's his fourth rushing touchdown for Dorian Brown today. Wow. The signature on this bowl game to Dorian Brown. Once again, in the red zone, we talked about it all day. This is what they do. They walk away with touchdowns, not field goals. They just lean on their offensive line. Combined 106 starts. This group plays extremely well together. Like you said a couple of plays ago, they've been very fortunate because they've been injury free up front, too. And the extra point splits the uprights. 14 yard touchdown. Brown is up to 120 yards. Test on eight carries. <laughs> eight carries. He said, okay, Olet, I got this, I got this. Like, look at that, just running behind the, the big fellas up front, weaving in and out, really good vision. Think about that, getting some Bahamian players over to the States and doing some camps over here. Um, I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it. Put me in, coach, it, I know that play. If it includes a, tr a trip down here for you, I exactly. see. Exactly, I'm all for it now. I, I would love to be a part of that. I thought the, the camp that they had, you know, showing the kids just the different skills, I would love to do something like that. Right? UAB turning it over on downs there. You know, uh, early has been, well, that's just a drop. First down 10. <laughs> down to the 36. Maxwell to throw for the first time. And complete. Able to hook up with Andrew Meyer. He was able to shake a first tackler and advance on for first down yardage. Always a good play to hit it off to Dorian Brown. Another big gain for Brown. And another first down. 17 yards there, and Brown's running. And he's, his cutbacks have been exceptional. 
Yeah, this is just a zone read right there. He bends all the way to the backside of the play, and it comes around here, like you said, exceptional vision. Both games should be exceptional, epic matchups. Here's fourth down and three out of the timeout. And Maxwell to throw. And it's off the hands of DJ Nock, who brought in a touchdown pass, which seems like an eternity ago. <laughs> you know, I'm impressed he told you the story that he admitted to that. A lot of guys wouldn't come clean on that kind of story. Good that for him. Do. Yeah. Oh, wide open target. For A.J. Erdley, it's Colin Lisa, who has been one of his go-to guys here today. Gain a 23 on the play. Yeah, really good throw, too, by Earl, Earl, by Early too. Just right into the seam route, like we used to call it a bang eight, skinny post, right up the side, right up the hash, a little outside the hash, between the hash and numbers, root for, uh, for the win. But it's always uh, something that you want to focus on going to a bowl game. Fourth and five, obviously going for it. And it's knocked away. Is that Hagen again? It is. Hagen again. Javon Hagen is a guy who chose the Bobcats over eight other Division I teams. Cincy, Miami, Ole Miss all wanted a piece of him. And Hagen chose Ohio. The Bobcats of Ohio will finish an impressive season at 9-4. I know they're still bothered by those late losses to Akron and Buffalo. This will help ease some of that pain going into the offseason. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Good for Ohio, man. Had a really, really good season. Didn't end the way they wanted to, but it ended today the way they hoped. And, uh, I think it was a good showing for their program and for Coach Solich and uh, his, his young men. And really good for the Bobcats. Congratulations to Ohio. Still a feel-good story, UAB. Doesn't feel that good right now. It'll feel better when they get home and look back.